but one of the cameras in one of their entrances was marking everybody as with fever. Every single person walked in had a fever. So clearly that was wrong, right? It's not possible, mm -hmm. right? So people started wondering what was going on. And then they realized that that particular entrance was facing an open parking lot, oh. an uncovered parking lot, okay? In the middle of September where temperature is 54 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Okay. In the time a person parked their car and walked a hundred meters to the entrance, their temperature went up to degrees Celsius. As soon as they came in the door, the camera says, no, no, you're sick, get out of here. Yes. Okay. So double cameras are not smart. They don't know what, what the circumstances are. They don't know the environment. They can only tell you yes or no. They take an absolute reading, okay? The other part where thermal cameras don't really work is because uh, everybody, every single person on this call has a different body temperature, right? So I'm looking at Teresa, I'm looking at Priji. At rest, Teresa's body temperature is different from Priji's body temperature is different from mine. And it can differ as much as two degrees Celsius, sure. right? So my, uh, my temperature for being told that I'm in a fever may be completely different from Teresa's, but be completely different from Priji's. Camera doesn't know anything. Camera only knows at 99.9, .9, I mark somebody as not safe, right? So the camera doesn't have any intelligence behind it. So camera can only say, this is your temperature and you're wearing a mask. So even though the camera is pretty ubiquitous, it's actually not the best solution. It's the easiest solution and the automation of the easiest solution. So what is required? What is required to change is that really you should be going to continuous real-time monitoring. Okay. The other last problem you have with cameras is that cameras can be fooled, okay? Let's say I've got fever, okay? But I've got a huge meeting with Teresa because I've got a million dollar contract going on with Teresa. So I need to see Teresa come what may. But I know at Teresa's office, there's a camera that's gonna catch me if I have a fever. So before I head to Teresa's office, I take a Panadol, right? The Panadol knocks my fever down. I walk in happy. But I've got a fever, I've possibly got COVID, and I'm walking into your office with no problems. So a camera can be fooled because it's a single point of time measurement. So with all of that in mind, we decided to imp implement a comprehensive system, okay? A modular system that actually works to protect the workplace. So what should that uh, system have? It, it has three components, okay? What we call minimal is what we just talked about. A camera-based thermal scanning at the entrance, because we have so, uh, maybe in a corporate environment or in a school environment or in a university public place, we have so many people walking through that you should have some level of minimal protection. Okay? So the minimal pro uh, pro protection is temperature screening and mass protection at the access. Okay? Mm -hmm. In corporates, you can integrate that with facility access control. What that means is if you've got a fever, you can't enter the building. Your access is locked right away, automated. That's the minimal that you should have. Better than that, which results in a 70% reduction of spread of COVID is to enforce masks throughout the premise. Okay? This can be done in multiple ways. You can do it manually. So make sure you have a policy and people follow the policy. You have a, a, you know, a marshal for every floor that makes sure you're wearing a mask. Or you can use cameras, your security cameras, to do AI and judge whether or not people are wearing masks. Both are possible. Okay, for example, we sell solutions where uh, we enforce masks through existing CCTV camera network, right? The existing CCTV camera network in your office will make sure everybody's enforcing the mask policy. That's better. It reduces the risk of spread by 70%. So look at the huge jump from just using cameras to cameras, but it's a 70% reduction. But the optimal, the only one that goes above 90 is if I'm continuously monitoring your temperature. Why is continuous monitoring important? Because in continuous monitoring, you're able to figure out step changes in temperature. And that's a giveaway that a person has fever, right? When a person comes in, for example, in that example of the mall, when the person walked in from the sun, the temperature goes up really quickly, but it comes down really quickly too, right? But when a person has fever, their temperature goes up slowly and stays up. So if I'm measuring you at regular intervals, I will notice your temperature going up I will notice your temperature staying up and I will notice your temperature mm -hmm. falling down if you're getting it down. But that's where the real trick is in being able to identify anomalies based on time, not just a single snapshot of time. So if you go back to the examples I talked about, the problems we have with, with thermal cameras, a system that does continuous monitoring, okay, actually works in preventing all the issues that we just talked about. It will make sure, first of all, that if you've got fever, you cannot fool the system with the panadol. 
because the Panadol will drop your temperature for a little bit of time, but it'll come right back up and the system will catch the drop and the comeback. Okay, it'll make sure that you're monitored all time. So if you came in the morning, but you were fine, and a little bit later in the day, you started developing a temperature, I'm still gonna catch you, so the camera's not gonna do it. Okay, and because any continuous system can be helped with AI, try and make baselines for people, I can draw a baseline for Teresa, for Bridgie, for Murli, for myself, which is based on my temperature reading. And any deviation from my temperature reading is now considered an anomaly. Okay. So a continuous monitoring that tells me how the temperature is changing really reduces the chance of infection and the chance of anybody with COVID walking around in the office. If anybody's got a fever, a system will catch that. And let, let me give you a simple example of that. I'm going to play a short video of how such a system would be uh, in, uh, implemented in a corporate environment. Okay. So hopefully you should be able to hear me. Doesn't like it. Okay, we'll try this. Okay, give me just one second. I'm going to have to pull it up separately. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so let me share my screen again. Yeah. So here is solution with COVID now. Yes. The thermal camera is checking for both temperature as well as mask building. showed you right now what the three elements of what I talked about being a modular system. Okay, The first element was screening at the entrance using standard thermal cameras. And these cameras are integrated with your access control system. So when you come to work, you're scanned for temperature, the, the scan system makes sure you're wearing a mask, and then passes the information to your central database saying, is this guy allowed to go in? Yes, he's got access, let him go in. If for whatever reason the gentleman or the lady has temperature detected right at the entrance, they're barred from going in. So the first step is detection and integration with access control. Once they go inside the corporate environment, we watch them with cameras to make sure that they're wearing masks all the time. Okay? A lot of corporates say that this is slightly invasive. We'd much rather do this manually. Well, not, not a problem, do it manually, but make sure you enforce wearing of masks. Right? And then the third part is really where we've added a twist that really takes care of everything, which is the part where the gentleman has an armband. Okay. Now, when we put an armband, this is... Think of it like a Fitbit, okay? But not worn on the arm, uh, on, the, on the wrist, but worn on the arm. The reason why you wear it on the arm is because there are only three places on your body where you can get an accurate core temperature. Your mouth, your rectum, and your arm. So the arm is the only place where you can do continuous monitoring and not inconvenience somebody, right? So we place 
a device that sits on your arm or you place a device that fits on your arm and takes temperature continuously every 30 seconds and conveys it to the cloud. And if there is a change in temperature, if there is a step up in temperature, the temperature stays up, then the cloud automates an alarm, which is sent to your security group and the security group can isolate you, right? Which is completely different from just taking a measurement at the endpoints. So this fulfills all three criteria of continuous monitoring. And as long as the person is in the office, their temperature has been taken continuously, right? If for whatever reason, let's say their temperature goes up and we suspect that they've got COVID, right? We isolate them. Not only do we do that, right. we integrate, we, we integrate uh, the result with their backend system, okay? So now HR knows that they've got COVID and they, if they're gonna come back to office, they better come with a COVID-free certificate. So we protect the environment in multiple ways. Okay, and that's just one use in a corporate environment. I can do the exact same thing, right? And do it more interestingly in a school environment, right? Today, all our kids are going back to school. Every single parent is worried about what's going on in school. I've got two kids in school. I sent one, I didn't send the other one. The one I had to send, I had no choice. The other one, I wasn't feeling the same. Until I brought something similar like this to the school itself. And let me show you how that works. Okay, the exact same uh, principle applied to a school. So with schools, you have an extra step, right? Most kids come to school in a bus. Most kids, not all, but most kids. You want to protect them in the bus as well. So when you wear an armband, the armband protects them from the time they leave the house when they get on the bus throughout the bus journey and in school, you'll see how. So the kids will be monitored as soon as they leave the house. When they approach the bus, the temperature is automatically checked. If they're okay, they get on. The young man gets to go home. Now, the bus journey can be as long as an hour in some places, right? Throughout the hour, the system is monitoring the child to make sure that the child's temperature is normal. Right? So if a child leaves home and he's okay, but about half the under the bus ride, his, his temperature starts rising, we know something wrong with that. We can isolate the child. At the end of the school, everybody's temperature is monitored. So in case you came by you know, walking or by cycle or your dad dropped you off, the temperature still stay checked at the end of the school. In class, continuously your temperature is being monitored. just two use cases now and you'll see how these use cases are completely different from what you're used to thinking in terms of health screening and this removes risk by as much as 90 percent okay so if i go back to my presentation now right, and we're here so what we've done is we've basically in, uh, what we've done is we've actually now implemented a fully integrated thermal screening solution, right? We've done automation at the entrance. So we've improved speed of entry throughput, okay? If you're wearing the armband, you don't even need to stop and let the camera take your temperature. You just walk straight through. So the, the best example of that is the school where kids just basically walk straight to class. There's no interruption, there's no lines, no changes at all, okay? Then you also have uh, Real-time testing, whether they're in the office, whether they're in the school, in the bus, whatever environment they're in, we're testing in real time. Any change, any step change is flagged and action is taken. And all of this is integrated with your existing IT systems and your control system. That gives you a comprehensive solution. So when you go to work or when you send your child to school, you know that if there is any anomaly, it's not being watched manually. Nobody's going to fall asleep on the job. It wasn't an incorrect statement. This is a machine. Machine doesn't care, a machine doesn't have emotions. It takes the reading, checks it, the condition, gives you an answer. Something is wrong, it's gonna flag something right away, it's never gonna sleep on the job. 
right? So it's going to protect the entire workforce. So if you've got a building with 10 floors and 1,000 people, I can take 1,000 people's temperature every 30 seconds continuously, and if a single one of them develops a high temperature, I can isolate them right away. I don't even have to wait until the next time they pass the camera. Within a few minutes, I will know that they've got high temperature. I can inform security, security will isolate them. So it's a very comprehensive system, works brilliantly for uh, corporations, works brilliantly, for, it actually works very well for school, and actually has multiple um, implications and applications throughout many industries. Okay, so with that, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop because I've already gone, I think, 10 minutes over my time. Uh, I hope I've been pretty clear. I would welcome questions from the audience. Uh, if you could give us five minutes, we'll show you a quick demo. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, so I think, Madhu, you're going to be doing the demo? I'll stop sharing. Madhu? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Morley has left because his father is not well, so he just informed me. I can, we can, we will manage, no problem. We will manage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so you're going to show the video? No, it's, it's yeah, a quick demo. Yeah, we are demo. going to show a quick demo. The demo. Yes. Uh, here it is. So uh, you everyone can yeah, everyone can see the screen, right? Yes. Yes, we yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah, Masu, if you want to go ahead, you can go or uh, else I can uh so so I, I, I won't go into too deep a demo, but here is for example an implementation of such a system. Right? This is what a dashboard would look like for the security team. Okay, and, and what would happen is that at any given point of time, if there was a temperature detected, a screen would be raised. Okay, and an alert would be sent to somebody saying, hey, somebody's temperature is high. Okay, at the same time, if for whatever reason, a child was supposed to be in school and is not, I would know because a child is unreachable. Okay, or if the system has multiple areas to collect data, if any of the data collection points are missing, the system would be able to point that as well. So we have a system uh, live today that can actually implement every single thing that we talked about, right? And here it's showing, for example, this person being monitored, okay? Total amount of alerts, the monitoring started on the 12th or 7th of December, okay? And until the uh, 9th of December, for two days, we just did a, a trial. These were the amount of alerts, about 20 alerts within two days. Within two days, there were 20 different instances in which the temperature went out of limits. And so it was checked, corrected, no problem. The ticket was closed, life went on like normal. So these people could go about their business. And if there was any anomaly, the system was able to catch it and raise a ticket immediately to do second research. Okay, I think uh, Madhu, because Murli is not here, I think we'll just stick with this unless you want to talk about something. Yeah, actually I can uh, clarify okay. something. Here, here you can see there are totally 23 anomalies are uh, raised, okay. So, uh, same like that, you can here see, the, you can quickly configure the response team. Uh, once the alert rises, the response team quickly go and check what has happened really to the staff or child. And uh, here you can quickly configure, uh, configure who, uh, to whom you have to kind of, uh, monitor, like uh, staffs or the students, like that. So here, the main key feature of, key, key feature of this uh, platform is configuring the alerts. Here, you can set the thresholds for each and every uh, person individually. Because each and every person body temperature will vary from one to uh, another. So here you can simply set the resource at which point you, uh, the alarm should be raised, like the ticket should be raised like that. So if, if, you, that. if you go back to my initial statement, it, we can automate or, or Munisa's back. Okay, Munisa, you want to take this through? You're muted, sir. Yes, uh, sorry. Thank you, Madhu. Uh, apologies, yeah. there was an emergency. I just wanted to spend five minutes and then, you know, take this great opportunity to, uh, in the name of, uh, you know, human. So, um, uh, Madhu, just be there. I just wanted to show uh, a little bit on what it is, and then you can continue with that. So, how okay. things happen. So, as you all can see, um, this is, uh, you know, as you can see, there is a situation called continuous monitoring versus in Monitoring. Today, we are all trying instant monitoring. Instant monitoring helps you if someone comes to office, someone goes to school, you know, the cameras, as Masruji was rightly pointing out, pointing out, 
He can just tell you with paracetamol, you're perfectly all right. Or you can be passive and somebody else may get the temperature as well. So what we did is like, how do I continuously, how do we continuously monitor? As you can see, this is a continuous temperature monitoring armband that is already there in Trinidad Tobacco, helping the people to come in back to office or back to school. Now this uh, comes with a 99.9% .9 pure copper in the back, which ensures that you know your, your the body skin temperature is what we are measuring, and that has been constantly measured. That's one of the thing. Second, the sensor here ensures your battery life. The way we have tuned it, the battery life will be not less than nine months to one year, compared to uh, you know daily chargeable activity, which takes uh, you know a typically go back to job like blue collars or the staffs into rough works or the school kids who can't maintain this properly, etc. So we came out with our solutions where we will be having uh, a simple mechanism, not a battery losing mechanism, continuously monitor once in three minutes. And this also has two variants to communicate to the, uh, uh, to the world. I just wanted uh, to share with you my screen, uh, if you could allow me for a minute. Yes. Amadou, can you unshare, please? Yeah. Okay. So this is, I'm just taking ahead from uh, Masrur's view. How both instant checks are going to give a, give a trouble for us and how continuous check is going to help you. The way we brought in the technology here in correlation to the real time health activities. These are all the ways a typical room temperature which is anywhere between 25 to 27 degrees centigrade. And it can be cold anywhere between 15 to 18 or hot in Middle East kind of environment where it can be anywhere between 35 to 40 in a typical environment. In such states, there is a clarity of medical research which says on tricep, typically first most capable place is mouth where you get your uh, uh, best temperature. Uh, second is rectum, third is tricep has to be working in an environment we chose tricep and uh, you know typically we go and tie these bands on the arm and the arm is five centimeter away from the armpit and that's its calibration is completed and you can wear your dress on top of it so you don't know even you're wearing anything called a, a monitoring system and once this goes in this also gives you capability of understanding the office location we came with came out with our own uh, BLE Wi-Fi router connected to your secured, uh, you know, internet protocol of your company or your school. And we also are coming out with our mobile variant, which can be optional based on the security aspects. So this secures ensures none of the people are tracked where they are, but it's only tracks through the modem or the gateway, which is securely scoped or tied up with your own network. So we will be able to not only find the location of the people for location, we call it as contact tracing within 30 feet uh, and we instantaneously trace, that's what Madhu was showing you the demo, we'll go back there. So if at all somebody is going to show the anomalies in 15 to 20 minutes, we have a quick alarm system to go back and ensure an expert goes, goes to the uh, anomaly, attends to it and either isolates them or switches it off if it's false alarm and operational efficiency. We have our own intelligence system, which will automatically close down any alarms or alerts in this case. So you can onboard it in a classroom, you can onboard it in a factory, or you can onboard it into a bus so that you are able to consistently, continuously monitor inside a premise, which is what is important to get back to business or get back to school. So that is how uh, our facility for you all it is not only just in a, a SaaS based system, we give you cloud APIs to integrate with your downstream system. As Masru was pointing out, go with your attendance system, go back with your um, you know, school registry system, or go back with your production planning and control staffing systems. This all can be hooked up back to your downstream systems as well. So you are able to slightly bring in coexisting systems with your existing platforms so that you don't try to create one more layer, instead it get fused up with your existing system. So that is how the entire platform is designed. And this is hardware agnostic. Today we are bringing you this hardware and there might be SPO to coming in tomorrow. 
for high end uh, emergency cases it can be uh, you know how can we do uh, you know analysis of your ct scan tomorrow and that can be hooked onto the platform as well so we are so, coming out with the first continuous monitoring system so so we, think in terms of an application in mining to be sir right where you have a risk of uh, co2 poisoning right if i have a co2 sensor on my arm which is automated it can give you information about oh there's a co2 leak we get everybody out of the mine um, right so i think i think we'll hand it back to you guys now for safety uh, you know. yes so thank you this is so very informative we have quite a few questions that i want to go through and i'm asking them in the order that they came in and any one of you can go ahead and answer um what about privacy concern? I've been thinking about that as the presentation go about. Privacy concern, most people are careful about what information they want their employers or any system to know, especially with um, health concerns and stuff like that. How do you manage all of that within this health, real-time health system? Sure, so the first thing is that this is very basic data. Right? We are not collecting anything except temperature data. Okay, we are not even collecting lo location data. Right? So all we're saying is uh, person A, B, C, their temperature is okay or not okay. That's about it. So the temperature, the data collection is very minimal. Okay? The alerting system only sends an alert in terms of a state change, not necessarily the entire list of data. The list of data is in the back end, the user never actually sees them. Okay? And then in terms of the actual data preservation, it's either controlled by the company or in the cloud. Either way, the, com the company has control, complete control. So we, we're really not doing anything outside of taking your temperature and reporting it to a system. Okay. So we're not taking any heart rates, we're not taking walking distance, nothing of the sort. Okay. But the system can take other information, data. No. Yeah, no? If, if, if it was designed to, yes. Yeah. So in, in the case of if you specifically requested me to do something, sure. Okay, but for in this case, it's only COVID. So I have a question about the Caribbean, where it's warm throughout the year. So you use that example of the car park um, in, your, in, in the thermal testing. Um, in the Caribbean, it's always warm. So you're walking down the street, it's very, very hot. Can the system be adapted to change the degrees of what is acceptable and not in? Absolutely. Uh, not only at a system level, but all, even on an individual level. Okay. Right, so can be, uh, sorry, Mulisa, go ahead. Okay, so... You're uh, muted, sir. Uh, yes, now I'm, in, I'm allowed. So, if you can understand why we brought this technology, you can be in the cold weather or hot weather. A body skin temperature is body skin temperature. It doesn't change. Okay, so the environment is different from your body skin temperature. So, we go to the near truth near your skin, which continuously monitors you. Okay, you can be at a minus two or zero degree, you know, ambient temperature, but you have been always measured either by Fahrenheit or Celsius when you're measured. So we are governed naturally by those aspects of accuracy. That's one thing I would like to tell you. Okay, right. great. And, okay, uh, give one, one more, one more, if with your permission, on the uh, security aspects, you know, that's going to give uh, uh, you know, more outline on security aspects for the audience. These are all, um, uh, I'm just going ahead and then uh, trying to, uh, did, did you able to see this? Not yet, right? The question and answers, but you can also send it to us in the essence of time and we can get it to all of the all right. delegates. All right, all right, sure. I will do that. Right. Is it a fact sheet? Is the question and answers, um, did I see correctly? Sure. Okay, good. Given the devastating effects of COVID on aviation and tourism, you know, the Caribbean, the, all the countries of the islands of the Caribbean, tourism is, is a huge industry here. Can such solutions be applied to give people confidence to travel again? So, in fact, uh, Teresa, in fact, yes. the way I was dreaming for Caribbean, right? The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the bars, the nightclubs, how do you make people come back there? Huge business is there. So how can like you give your bands for the dancing or to identify a person who is coming into the party and going out to the party, this can be infused along with continuous monitoring of the participants so that you keep the entire crowd safe by react, proactive monitoring rather than searching for contact tracing in the future. If something has 
gone wrong. So we are proactive. Yes. That's the way I can bring think of a use case for you instantly. So, in the so Melissa, let, let me add to that. So Dubai yeah. is actually doing this, Teresa, right? Dubai oh. requires every uh, every visitor to have a contact tracing app on their phone, right? But the contact yes. tracing app is only half the, the battle. The other battle is measuring temperature all the time. So let's think in terms of uh, a visitor coming to Trinidad and Tobago, okay? They're given an armband to wear as soon as they enter from the airport, okay? And the armband basically takes their temperature all the time. So no need for them to quarantine, okay? They have an app on their phone that makes sure that the data is within limits and they can go about their normal life. If for whatever reason their temperature goes up, the authorities are informed. If nothing goes on, they can have a great vacation in Trinidad and Tobago and go back whenever they're ready. On the way out to the airport, they hand the band back and they're done. Oh, so they can, they can live. So we are, we are talking in this mechanism to Dubai airport. Okay. We are talking to airlines, in fact. Right. See, airlines are struggling to say, how do I know that within a 14 hour flight from Dubai to New York, somebody doesn't get a temperature? So we're talking to the airlines saying, look, when they're boarding the plane, right, nowadays they're giving them hygiene kits. Well, give them an armband. Right. The armband goes in. The armbands are continuously monitoring. If somebody's temperature starts rising, an alarm goes to the stewardess. The student says, hey, seat 17B, you seem to have temperature. Can we please isolate you at the back of the plane? Right? So it brings back a whole amount of normalcy. Right? And in, especially in tourism, in tourism, we believe that we have a big role to play. Right? Because uh, if you can assure people that you can, first of all, you don't need to go into quarantine. As soon as you come, you can go and have fun. Right? Okay. At the same time, we're watching you. Okay. So, so this is a question I'm dying to ask. Can this be tailored? To, to accommodate social distancing. You know, sometimes you're in a crowded supermarket or something, and someone comes very close to you, can you go beep, 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 beep? It's not six feet apart or something like that? Uh, this is something that Murli would have to answer. I, I couldn't answer that directly. And, and okay, in so, its current state, so we no. don't have to. It's just something I have in the back of my head. There should be an app or something out there that if someone comes too close into your personal space, you should be notified in one way or the other. And not sound too much like a Star Trek kind of thing. <laughs> okay. True. So um, another question here is, do you offer solutions for meteorology, agriculture, and national health systems? And if so, who to contact for details? And we can share your contact information, can we? Sure, and I, I would encourage everybody to get in touch with our partners, Power and Tell. Uh, okay. Power Intel kind enough to bring us here. So if you can get in touch with uh, Sheikh Hussain or anybody Sheikh Power Hussain. Intel, yeah, they, they okay. will have to definitely so, so short. And in terms of solutions for the different industries you talked about, uh, it, it actually depends on the actual need. For sure, my answer would be yes. Uh, we do a lot of work in the remote asset management, which is very true in all these industries. So I don't want to take up everybody's time on this, but absolutely, uh, please reach out to Sheikh and we will come back to you for sure. Okay, and Sheikh, we will give you a couple minutes at the end to just say how to contact you and um, what you have been doing on your end to facilitate the partnership. Okay, another question is, can you expand a little on the school use case? This is a matter that concerns most people globally, given the many outbreaks in school. We know schools are breeding grounds for COVID. Sure, and, and the biggest problem in, in schools actually, what, what most people are not looking at is the teachers and the support staff, okay? Most of the outbreaks have happened between teachers and the support staff because children tend to have a slightly higher resistance to COVID, okay? So most of the outbreak have happened in the staff, not in the kids, okay? So the way we look at it is, if you're going to protect the school or any education environment, you protect everybody. Right? So from the bus driver to the bus attendant to the student to the principal, everybody is monitored all the time. So that way you're able to keep a tight lid on a very close environment. Okay, We've done this, uh, we're doing this uh, POC in multiple schools in India and in Dubai, right? where we basically blanket the entire school. So we're talking about 2,000 armbands, right? and everybody's monitored all the time. What this does is, as soon as parents realize that the environment is controlled, they have more sense of peace and they're able to send children over. Until you know that the environment is safe, just, just desanitizing the environment doesn't really help you. Right? I need to know that somebody is watching over my kids. It's not possible to do it humanly through, through just a teacher. A teacher's got 20 students to take care of. Right? But the system is a one-to-one -one system, watches each person individually. 
So this has been, uh, this has picked up actually quite quickly. And I believe uh, the Caribbean goes back to school in January. Well, online on the, um, in Trinidad and Tobago, we're going back online in January and maybe by February we will test, we will have another um, benchmark to see what's going on. Sure. Um, yeah. So staying with that question on schools, do you have any data to share with us when you implemented this system, like were you able to isolate like more than 10, you know, control the spread of COVID in the school? Can you, can you tell us a little bit of how that is panning out? To be honest, unfortunately for the schools, I cannot because okay. one of the things that we do is a privacy statement, right? right. Schools sign the privacy statement saying you cannot share our data, right? Uh, we can give you, um, I can give you anecdotal evidence Right, anecdotal evidence that from the other trials, we've been very clearly been able to identify use cases where a person's temperature has ridden. We've identified them and been able to isolate them. Okay. And you were able to control spread by isolating yes. that person in real time. Right. So what, what happens is post that date, there were no other cases of COVID, is the only thing we can say. Ah, okay. Right? Because I cannot, even when I isolate a person. I don't know why that person's been isolated. All I'm going to tell you is that they are showing symptoms of fever. You need to isolate them and tell them to get checked. It could very well be that they didn't have COVID in the first place. Right? But I'm okay. better, uh, better safe than sorry, as they say. Right? So I would yes. much rather isolate one person, get them tested, than risk uh, 20 people in the room. Okay. So, we, we so, had, so, yeah. so without sharing any privacy data, you would say that the schools who have used the system has been able to control this spread. Yes, that is a ah. fair statement. Also, that unfortunately, I, I wish I could back. I would love to back. That's it okay, day. and okay. we understand. It's just because we want to get a sense. But testing, testing, um, is one thing. But being able to control this spread is another. So, if right. the testing and the isolation it has a correlation to the spread in that environment, then that's where the true value of the system is. Correct. And, and what we've done with most of the schools is we've gone in with the pilot first. Right? Okay. So the, the system works, right? So we'll do maybe two classrooms and 50 kids, right? But a, a pilot by the definition of this product is actually not really um, uh, good for a, for a school because it needs to control everybody. And when the kid walks out, it's uncontrolled. Yeah. Right? So very easy. Once we show that the system works and it does what it's supposed to do, it's very easy to extend the pilot to the entire school and then see the effectiveness. Okay. So we quickly run out of time. I wanted the um, three of you to give give us some closing comments, and then I will invite Sheikh to come in and tell us how to get in touch with him and a little bit of power and tell in the region. So I could stay sure. with you and start with you, Mas Masu. So, Teresa, first of all, again, I'd like to thank Canto. It's very, very kind of you to host us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we, we believe that uh, there is a fight to be fought, and yes. we are with everybody to fight this, uh, this scourge. And the most important thing I want you to take away is that I'm trying to get you back to normal. That's all. Uh, yes. I'm not doing anything great. Take you back to normal, and I'm happy. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Preji? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending, and thanks for organizing the call. Thank you so much. Okay. Mali? Thanks, Teresa. I mean, you have given various use cases to be handled between our thought process of how to make things happen versus <laughs> what Trinidad needs, what Caribbean needs. So if there was a lot of lessons today, but that will make us go back home, do more uh, to the region. That's how I look at as an opportunity today. And I'll be more, we all will be happy to continue to engage every participant today on how to make it, and we are ready to do more sessions on how to make it, then we'll decide how we can make it together as a customer versus Caribbean versus us. So, you know, I'll be looking forward for a very quick opportunity to help revive back to business as an environment. Thank you so much. Sheikh, are you there? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Okay, so be quick. To be quick, um, I can be reached via email, uh, sheikh.hossein at ptsupply.com. And I invite you to share that email address um, with the rest of your recorded presentation when you post it. Um, Power and tell in the region, 
And we have been serving this region for upwards of 25 years, even more. Powertel has been in existence for more than 50 years. And we bring value to the supply chain um, by virtue of the number of vendors we represent, um, high quality vendors, of course, like AM Technologies. And what we do is we, because of our relationship with the many um, operators in the region, uh, Central South America and the, and the Caribbean, um, we understand very well, or we try to make ourselves understand the needs um, at any given point in time, as far as technology is concerned, and find the right solution and bring it to the table of our customers. In this case, we recognize that COVID-19 has seriously disrupted the industry, including sales like myself. I'm, I'm unable to travel and meet with customers anymore. And um, when I had this conversation with AM Technology, who is one of our um, flagship uh, vendors, and they spoke about this uh, solution that they had developed, uh, basically it's a solution, it's the monitoring is a core part of, of what they offer for years on end. And all they did was add this feature to that platform that already existed um, to be able to help solve the aviation, the tourism, manufacturing, uh, corporate offices, schools. It applies in many different um, scenarios. I thought it would make a lot of sense um, for us to find a way to quickly bring it to the table, not just the individual um, customers that I have, but across the region and the best medium to do it was through Canto. Thank you. We're happy to be sharing the technology. We're happy to be able to provide a platform that can help nurture the regional technology industry. So if I may take just one more minute, I'd love to thank Timothy, who's been hands on with us since day one. Thank you very much yes. for helping Timothy and Jimmy today as well. Thank you very much. Yes, Timothy and Jimmy are our tech gurus. So we have to get you guys working together closely with them. Okay, <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. So I just have some closing remarks for um, delegates, if you would give me two minutes of your time again. This session concludes the 2020 edition of Canto Conversations. On behalf of the Secretariat team, Jimmy, Timothy, Leanne, Gail, Andrea, Cheyenne, Carmen, I would like to thank you all for joining us on this journey. Please continue to stay connected with Canto. We have some exciting themes and some exciting issues to bring to the forefront in 2021, starting with Canto Conversations the second week of January 2021. We'll also have our AGM on the 8th and 9th of February. Join us, you will get great content, premier branding and superb networking opportunities. And as we move into the holiday season, remember to stay safe and help in the fight against COVID-19. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a very good holiday season. Merry Christmas. And I will see you bright and early in 2021. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.